Hi, this is Shupriyo from shupriyopando.com and today we are going to talk about Lebanon and the financial crisis that it is currently undergoing. So it's a huge topic and there's a lot to unpack. So I'll start with a brief description of Lebanon. I'll talk about the repercussions to India and then we'll get directly into why this crisis has happened and what are the developments till now because it has been about 100 days since the crisis has been unfolding. So let's get right to it. So the first thing about Lebanon that you have to understand is its geographical uh, location. So the official name of uh, Lebanon is the Lebanese Republic and I'll just show you an image of the country. So as you can see, uh, Lebanon is bordered by Syria to the north and to the east and it is bordered by Israel to the south. Uh, while on the west it has a Mediterranean Sea and uh, you can see a small island, it's uh, Cyprus, uh, that's the uh, island that's to the west of this country across the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, just see another picture, just check out this picture. So you will understand the critical location of Lebanon, like where it is located in between Europe and the Middle East. So it was a very important channel. And I'll take a deep dive into why this is important later on. Let's get into it. So the first thing that we have to see is that the main protests are happening in Beirut, Lebanon. So it's the capital of Lebanon and uh, there has been a lot written about these protests and the entire economy of uh, Lebanon is on the brink of a collapse because of this uh, protest that is happening. And uh, the currency of Lebanon is the Lebanese pound and the Lebanese also call it the Lebanese lira. So this is not something that you will find on Google, but all the Lebanese people refer to it as the Lira sometimes. So don't get confused if this word is spoken about. And as I told you, the name of the country is the Lebanese uh, Republic and I talked about the borders. So these protests that are happening right now, they are basically unprecedented anti-government demonstrations. Never before in the history of Lebanon have there been so deep protests by common people out on the streets. Like this is something that you can uh, have a analogy with Hong Kong. Like Hong Kong, there have never been so many people out on the streets trying for change, crying out for reforms, etc, etc. So it's quite a very urgent issue in the Middle East. And this is another Arab uprising uh, that has started off in 2020. As we already know, there was the Arab Spring that had taken place a few years uh, earlier. And Lebanon, it seems, joined the party a bit late. So what are the repercussions for India in this scenario? So uh, we just have to know about the diplomatic relations between India and Lebanon. So the bilateral trade stands at about 300 uh, million US dollars and most of it about 280 million dollars is the Indian exports and we import very little from uh, Lebanon. So a lot of exports are going uh, into that country but nothing major and it's not a major partner but it can be problematic if Iran becomes involved. So as we go deep into this story you'll understand why there is an Iranian presence in the story as well and if Iran becomes more involved then it can be an issue for India and uh, Arab unrest is never good for India because of the high current account deficit that we have so it's not good for oil prices and it would be better if this crisis could have been resolved but as uh, you will see that it's a very difficult crisis to resolve right now so uh, let's check out about uh, the exact sectarianism problems. So this is a word that you will be hearing quite a lot in the Lebanese problem, which is sectarianism. Now, what are the social and political problems being created by this sectarianism? Uh, this word comes from the word sect and it is defined as a group of people whose religious beliefs differ from those of a larger group. So it's a subsection of a larger political group. Now, uh, the situation in Lebanon is pretty complicated because Lebanon was a melting point of cultures. As you saw in that picture, uh, Lebanon stands just between the Middle East and Europe. So there was a lot of intermixing. People used to travel across the Mediterranean Sea from the west to the east and from the east to the west. And uh, Lebanon was sort of a meeting point of different cultures. So what happened was that the population in Lebanon, it doesn't comprise of a single majority group or a single sect. So basically there are 18 officially recognized sects 
in uh, Lebanon. And this has created a huge economic and political problem that has been unresolved for decades now. And uh, you have to also get into the complicated political systems of Lebanon. So Lebanon's laws require that uh, the sects, the 18 sects that are there, they have to share power in government. So each sect gets a specific number of parliamentary seats that are given to them and uh, all those seats cannot be taken by any other sect. So what happens, this leads to myriad complications like uh, when there's a vote, citizens can only vote for candidates for specific sects that are running in their district. So can you imagine like uh, there might be a Sunni person or a Shia person and if a Sunni person is not running in your district then you cannot go ahead and vote for a Shia person and if you want a Christian and he is not running you cannot go ahead and vote that person. So what happens is th this leads to a lot of division and uh, even more complications arise because uh, the three highest political offices in Lebanon uh, which is the president, the prime minister and the speaker of the house these three need Need to be from different sects. So the president must always be a Maronite Christian, the prime minister must always be a Sunni and the speaker of the house must be a Shia. So as you can see it's a very very complicated political system and to top that off decision making becomes extremely complicated because a two-third majority is needed in the cabinet so that any decision can be arrived at. So as you can understand so many different opinions there are 18 different sects and it's very difficult to get a resolution in most cases. So this uh, the example of this is that in 2018 the first general election took place after such a long amount of discussion like decades of discussions uh, the general elections could take place and even you will be surprised to know that it took 12 years for the budget of this country to be approved just because of the myriad complications in its political systems and Lebanon has always been deeply deeply divided by sectarianism and so what is the solution to all of these issues now earlier people used to say uh, that uh, 1943 uh, Lebanon got independence and at that time the proponents used to say that it guarantees peace and it guarantees inclusion but sectarianism failed a lot because it fueled a 15 year old civil war and this was the largest war in the history of Lebanon and Iran also got involved uh, to top it off even Israel got involved so it was a huge quagmire of sorts and uh, the young people they are basically extremely angry so people are protesting across sectarian lines to end the system so Shias, Sunnis, Christians and all the other sects people young people especially from these sects have come together and they are calling to destroy this system completely. So people are calling for a constitutional amendment and an amendment of all the laws that are governing Lebanon right now. And uh, people are extremely angry that it has been 30 years since that 15 year uh, civil war that I talked about. And even then there has been no change in the status quo. So they are tired of all these arguments and the young people want change. And uh, as you can see, you can tie up this Lebanon problem with a lot of other problems that are going on in the world right now. People want change. They want drastic change. They are not ready to listen to the excuses of politicians that it will take time, that we have to wait for the right moment. They want to act now. And this is how the protesters actually came together and they are protesting so efficiently in a single block. And now we'll go into the economic and financial problems that have been caused because of this issue. So a very important thing to note is that the debt to GDP ratio in Lebanon is at 152%. So it's the third highest ratio in the world. And uh, it's just after Japan and Greece. So uh, you must remember that Japan has the highest debt to GDP ratio in the world. It stands at about 236%. And uh, Lebanon is right now in the third position. So the total debt, you don't need to remember the figure of the total debt. It's $86 billion. And uh, the total GDP hovers around 54 to 56 billion US dollars. So this, these are not so important, but this 152% number is extremely important. And and the youth employment, uh, I'm sorry, the youth unemployment stands at about 37%. So you can understand 
what is what this is doing to the young people they are extremely angry that they are not getting jobs and uh, to top that off there are chronic public service problems as well like people are not getting electricity they are not getting proper drinking water their garbage is not being disposed of so these public service issues are happening because of the the lack of political will and the lack of the politicians to address the real problems they just want to enjoy power they don't want to help the common population and the population is extremely angry because of this and uh, you will also see that in the transparency internationals corruption perception index uh, lebanon has been ranked at an abysmal 137 out of 180 countries and uh, please make a note that uh, the recent rankings have come out and india has been ranked on the 80th position in this list uh, we have slipped down from 78 position so as you can see that uh, lebanon uh, is a very uh, corrupt place and the politicians are enjoying power at the expense of the people of that country and uh, there have been lot of issues because of all these protests now uh, you must remember that these protests they are now over 3 months old uh, so it's been almost uh, 100 days since the protests are happening and what the banks have done like happened with us when uh, demonetization happened there were bank withdrawal limits right and uh, the lebanese government they have instructed bank controls to be put in place and withdrawals have been restricted to 200 dollars a week and there have been tight capital controls so people are not getting access to cash and this is making them even angrier the lebanese pound it has depreciated by 60% can you believe that and there are sky high bond yields and uh, there's also an interesting thing that uh, there was a 1.2 billion dollar euro bond repayment so this euro bond has to be repaid by lebanon but uh, right now because of so much difficulties uh, the international investors feel that they will not be able to repay this euro bond so uh, euro bond is basically any bond which is denominated in a currency other than the country's home currency so this is a dollar denominated euro bond and and it's a huge issue because if uh, lebanon is defaulting on this payment then the economic woes will only worsen and uh, yeah, just uh, recently the finance minister of lebanon said that uh, the country will need 5 billion dollars to buy wheat fuel and medicine so they say that they are having huge issues and uh, to respond to this mike pompeo who is the us secretary of state he said that unless and until Lebanon will be affecting all these changes that the population wants we will not be giving them any money so effectively the west has uh, shut it down and uh, the west is saying that unless the people of lebanon are satisfied we are not going to help the government with any kind of external funding so the financial problem is worsening day by day and so what's the outcome of all of these things that have happened that have transpired so there is a political crisis as well as an economic crisis right there is a two edged sword and uh, this led to the prime minister saad hariri uh, resigning after two weeks of intense protests like people were out on the streets and the economy had come to a standstill even all the banks had been closed for two weeks so he had to resign there was no other way Uh, some people are saying that he resigned because he might have been indicted for uh, corruption and he wanted to avoid that but opinion is divided some are saying that the government wanted to soothe the people and so he resigned now uh, just to make a note of another issue that is at the crux of this there is a group called the hezbollah so the hezbollah they are actually backing the government so what is the hezbollah basically so hezbollah is basically an iranian backed movement and it was a shiite uh, muslim political party that was used by ayatollah khomeini who was the former supreme leader of uh, iran to consolidate power and it had actually formed in the backdrop of that 15 year uh, civil war that i talked about so their main thing is that they oppose israel and they uh, resist the americans and the west and uh, they have always supported ayatollah khomeini and so you can understand it is a anti america anti west kind of a movement and so they are extremely angry that these protests are happening 
and uh, these uh, uh, you know these hezbollah people they feel that uh, these protests they are actually being instigated by the west so they are saying that these protesters are pro western and they want to topple the government that's why they are protesting but uh, the protesters are denying it as of now however the hezbollah uh, linked groups have already gone ahead and attacked the protesters which is a quite shameful act because they have been attacking the unarmed protesters who were on the streets and this has led to even more anger so the protesters were actually happy that uh, pm had resigned but they still want early elections and they want a total end to the political sectarianism that is actually uh, plaguing the country and they wanted a removal of the foreign minister jabran basil so uh, jabran basil was basically the face of corruption because he was the son in law of the current president who is michel aoun so uh, these two people were also being demanded to be uh, to resign however they have not resigned and what happened was that uh, there were lot of violent protests and people were out on the streets and this went on for 3 whole months uh, people had realized that peaceful protests are not going to work so we will have to come out on the streets and we will have to pro- protest and we'll have to get the change that we want so it was turning extremely extremely uh, violent and uh, so at that point of time what happened uh, the new prime minister was chosen so this person uh, is named hasan diab and uh, actually diab is a technocrat so he is basically not somebody who was a political figure but he is an uh, renowned uh, person from the economy who understands the situation well however this hasan diab he was chosen by the incumbents so he was chosen by the president michel aoun and also the political parties that are in power right now so they are not willing to uh, relinquish their power and what happened to jebran basil so jebran basil had to leave because the 20 member cabinet rejig uh, had to be done since the new prime minister had come in he formed his new cabinet and uh, so jebran basil had to go off and there were new uh, fi- foreign ministers uh, put in place and you also have to remember the name of the finance minister of lebanon currently the new person who is in this new 20 member cabinet uh, he is ghazni wazni and he also recently put out some statements that uh, we will need to uh, change the economic outlook we will have to put in place some reforms so that we can bring lebanon back on track and uh, he feels that the situation can be salvaged but he al- he already said that there's a huge weight on my shoulders and you can understand because the protests are still going on and as i said that the Uh, technocrats who have come they have been chosen by the incumbents so the incumbents were the actual corrupt people and the protesters wanted them to leave but because they have not left so now the protests are going on and recently there have been huge huge protests in lebanon yet again and the government property was damaged on an unprecedented scale people are out on the streets and it's getting extremely violent so we don't know what's going to happen in the future and uh, even as all this was happening uh, jabran basil actually attended the davos meet so a funny thing happened here uh, the cnbc international correspondent actually had an interview with him and there uh, she actually put some extremely extremely embarrassing questions to him regarding his travel expenses and how he had the money to come on a chartered plane to davos and i would link that video i would show you that video but since it's copyrighted i'll just put a link in the description you you can go ahead and watch it it's a extremely funny interview and you will laugh uh, as much as i did when you will see how he was embarrassed when the lady actually put those questions to him so this is the entire thing that's happening in lebanon the crisis continues to worsen and this has precipitated huge huge problems in the middle east and iran is getting involved because of the hezbollah link that i told you about america is also involved and people are saying that the things could escalate further because of the us iran tensions so this is all about the lebanon crisis i hope you understood most of it if you have any questions you can put them down in the comment below and i'll see you in the next video